Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 9 of my Android 12 project. Now, last time I mentioned to you that I was going to be replacing the thigh actuators, which is this whole section here, and taking away the servos and building some linear actuators that are similar to the actuators in a 3D printer. So here's my 3D printer, and what we've got is basically a carriage that travels up and down and that's just driven by this belt at the back and there's a motor here which turns and drives it up and down so it's going to take a similar approach to the thigh actuators so I could get a really high leverage but I could get lots of travel um, however having looked at DC motors to drive this and stepper motors and the torque that you get for the price and the rotation speed um, it would appear that it's far more economical just to use the servos I've got and hack them for continuous rotation so the servos that I've been using on this Android are these, which are the uh, GoTech, uh, it's a GS5515MG, um, which is basically a 15 kilogram per centimetre torque servo with metal gears, which are actually quite powerful. Um, they're about £15 each in money to buy in the UK. Um, but trying to find a motor that will rotate as quick as these with enough torque um, it's probably going to cost more than that, and then I still have to put, you know, a feedback pot and other things on. So obviously these are limited to 180 degrees ability to turn, which if I put a pulley on here isn't enough to drive the carriage far enough, which is the basic problem I've got with increasing the leverage and decreasing the torque. Um, so the torque of the motor would be fine with a pulley driving the carriage, because then the leverage is the same, and the carriage can go as far as it likes, however long I make it. So... Um, Obviously it's already a servo that's driven by standard PWM in for a servo, so that's great. Um, but basically the potentiometer inside is giving the feedback position. And what we'll need to do is break that out to one of these, um, which can travel much further, and probably that's enough length for the actuator. So that's just a slide pot that you get in an audio mixer or something like that, which I pulled out of a previous project, hence the handmade PCB. So, um, we're going to take this servo to bits and see what's inside. I've already undone the screws on the bottom. There's these four long screws. So the bottom comes off. Inside we can see the motor and the electronics. And if we just lift that board very carefully, you can just about see, and if we can see in there, but basically right, in the, right inside there is the feedback potentiometer and it's fixed to this board with the three terminals which are just here and it basically is directly underneath the output shaft so if I take the servo horn off and carefully take the top off we can see the lovely metal gears that we've got in there so that's the main output shaft and the motors on the other side and um, we can take some of these off, they're rather greasy but they fall off otherwise so we'll just take those two off and we can take out off the main output shaft as well now these servos are pretty good if we look inside there you can just about see a bearing there's also a bearing on the bottom of that now as well as these things being limited in rotation so there's um, a knob there you can just see and a corresponding channel on the inside of here so they don't rotate too far so we can file that knob off and that's fine but we also need to uh, do something about this potentiometer because there's a peg there that uh, fits into here and that won't rotate any further so it'll only do a 180 because that's the limit of the feedback pot so uh, we could cut that off and the bearing would still rest on the plastic but in fact these have been built in a really helpful way so if we pull the bearing out right, I eventually managed to get this tiny bearing out um, in the bottom of here well there's actually a piece of plastic which has got the slot in um, which holds the potentiometer shaft so we can just take that out stick the bearing back in which is actually a very tight fit and if we place that back on there 
um, then it will just rotate around. Let's place that bearing back on so that will continuously rotate. So if we chop the knob off, um, we can just have this go round and round and round and we'll disconnect the potentiometer and wire that to the external slide pot or any external pot and then we can make this servo drive a carriage and we can get the feedback from the slider pot instead of the pot inside. So in fact the uh, little metal end stopper is a separate piece which I pulled out of that hole. So now we should find if we can put the uh, top casing back on and we'll just put this servo horn on. Should find it will go round and round and round and round and rounds. Great, so now we can get on with building the linear slider and getting that pot placed onto it for feedback. Right, so I've 3D printed some parts and I've got hold of some other hardware. So my servo that I hacked for continuous rotation now has this nice blue gear on. So I got these gears from a place called Mindsets Online, formerly known as Middlesex University Teaching Resource in the UK. They're quite cheap gears, they come on um, a set of four like that in different sizes. They've also got these gears with a little middle gear so you can make a gear train. And there's some other ones available such as worm gears that um, mesh with those. They've got roughly a 3mm hole in the middle. They're made of quite soft plastic so um, basically I took the one of the medium sized ones, bored the hole out and I've pushed that onto the metal output shaft of the servo and just used a washer and the original servo screw to hold it on. So I've got this 3D printed mechanism which is part of the linear actuator. It's in several pieces. So there's a gap in the bottom there for the exi uh, existing 6mm studding of the robot legs. There's another layer where the servo goes. And then there's the final piece which will grip the slider bars which are 8mm. So all these parts are 3D printed. Have a look at my website for more information on the 3D printer. So that's the other end, so again that's in sections held together with an elastic band, that'll sit there. Um, there's holes all the way through them in the corners which are for 4mm bolts, so I can bolt those together to grip the bars to hold the whole thing together. I've also got the 8mm bar with these linear, uh, linear sliders which um, have ball bearings inside. So that'll quite happily fit in there. And then I've printed the carriage which holds four of those bearings and that will slide up and down like so. So I think what I probably need to do is put this together and um, have the carriage moving and then I'll work out what to do with the potentiometer which I think is going to sit on top somewhere near the output shaft. So the carriage itself is going to be driven by this chain There'll be another little gear that goes in the other end of this, so the chain goes all the way around, like the 3D printer example I showed at the beginning. And this chain happens to fit very nicely on these gears, it came from the same place as well. So uh, that'll be quite good to um, drive the carriage up and down. So let's get that assembled and hopefully we can power it up. So here it is assembled. So we've got the chain that goes around in there, and you can just see it goes around both gears at each end. And that's attached to the bottom of this carriage piece. Um, I made this lump here to have an output shaft driven on. Obviously this thing slides up and down. Now what I've done here is attach this slider pot, so I've uh, wired that to the circuit board where the normal internal potentiometer would go in the, uh, in the servo, and that's now wired to this slider pot. I um, actually made a ridge in there so I could put it in but then I realised it um, basically would bind on the output shaft so in fact these holes I've made for the cable ties to, hide the to hold the linear bearings in place it fits quite nicely in there so it needs to be fixed to one end so I need to make some slight modifications um, and make another piece that holds this in place stationary uh, but for now I can just hold this in place with my hand for testing so I've got a little servo controller here, Palulu Mini Maestro, and some batteries to power it. So let's plug that into a laptop and see if it works. All right, so I've got my um, servo controller plugged in and the batteries. I've plugged it into the USB, and I think if I move this pot, it should try and catch up. It's just about right. So if I hold that stationary and then try and move the servo around, That 
seems to work fine. There's a couple of issues, the chain doesn't look quite tight enough. Um, and obviously I need to make this piece of, of plastic to hold the potentiometer in place. But apart from that, the plan seems to have worked. So the initial plan is to replace the thigh actuators of the Android with these. And I've left these uh, channels, as I mentioned, at the back so that the actuator assembly can be screwed down onto the threaded rod that I've already got in there. And that's one of the main reasons I built the Android like that was so I could swap out sections. So I need to make two of these. Um, and if it comes to it, I'll be doing the same thing with the ankles as well. So uh, the next video will hopefully be some more testing with the new actuators in place.